Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. Toby Scovron is our guest mentioned, CEO, founder of The Pet Lou, and his website is thepetloo.com. We'll be giving you that throughout the course of the program. Toby, great to have you on This Week in America. Thank you for joining us. Thanks very much for having me, Rick. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, that moment where you actually decided, okay, I'm going to come up with something. I am going to solve a problem you're actually, what, 23 years old, standing in the rain, taking your dog outside, living in a high-rise at the time, realizing, you know, this is a problem for me and a lot of people to be able to take the dog outside. Yeah, I, you know, I thought I was special. I thought I was a unique person and blessed with all these amazing uh, uh, things and qualities in life. I actually am not. I am exactly like any other pet owner. Um, and uh, I realized that I, my problem was not unique to me. I'm um, as special as I thought I was at the time. And uh, I went out and solved the problem for myself, which actually ended up so- having solved, solved many, many problems for millions of pet owners around the globe. Your life has been an inspiration for so many people, not just from the inventing standpoint, and I'll talk about that in a second, but the fact that you've really made life easier for a lot of people, a lot of people who live in the high-rises, people who are in RVs and boats, elderly people who who really want to have a pet, but it's difficult for them to get the pet outside to take care of the pet's business when, when they go about doing that. I want to start, first of all, by talking about the, uh, the invention process and what, you were, what was going through your mind at the time. Most of us go through life and we're in a situation and we say something like, you know, somebody should invent, and then you come up, you know, fill in the blank, and in this case, some way that you can uh, have a pet take care of uh, bathroom uh, chores indoors without going outside. How do you get that to the next level from just realizing... There's a market for something like this to actually going through because you, you, you've got patents you're dealing with, you've got manufacturers, you've got design. How did you get that to the next level? Yeah, you know, I think that that's the difference between success and failure. Um, the light bulb that went on in my head was my girlfriend at the time, who's, who's now my beautiful wife of five years, um, she said, Toast, we just need a patch of backyard on our balcony. And with those words, patch of backyard on my balcony, the light bulb went on in my head, and I had a very clear vision of what I needed to do. Um, and then I, need, I had a very clear vision of how I needed to execute on that. Uh, I took a couple of, couple of uh, steps back and thought about, you know, the execution of that. And then I went about my business, and my mindset is all about, if I don't do it, um, somebody else is going to. And if If I rely on someone else to do it, it's not going to be as good because of my level of commitment to uh, to, to the attention and detail that I would have liked to have been executed at. So I went forward knowing that that's what needed to be done. Um, And I'm very, very, I've been very successful in uh, my leadership um, and and having my uh, suppliers, my raw material people all subscribe to the vision um, and actually have some sort of ownership, although not legally as far as ownership of the company or the product, but have ownership for their responsibility of the project um, to fuel um, the, pro- the program and, and the product to, to where it is today. You know, it's interesting, as I read, that, that this actually, the original design, when your wife is saying, basically, we need a piece of the backyard indoors, and that pretty well sums up exactly what we're talking about with the Pet Lou, and if you go yeah. to the website, you can get all that information. You drew this out in the back of a napkin, just like the rest of us when we've got an idea. Yeah, that's right. Um, it, it, uh, not, again, I thought I was special, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> I just went about, my, and that, you know, that's an inspiration to a lot of people listening today and a lot of people around the globe that have ideas. Just get out there and go and do it. Like, it's one thing to procrastinate and think and talk about it. Just apply yourself methodically, professionally, and go and get what you're after. Um, and nothing's given to you. And so f- from that perspective, you know, that's the sort of way in which I've led this, this company. Um, and, yeah, back of a napkin is where it started. 84 countries of distribution is where it's at. I want to expand that to 100, 150, um, but, you know, one, one small bite of, uh, of the dinosaur at a time, really. Toby Scovrin is our guest on the program. He is the CEO and founder of The Pet Lou. His website is thepetlou.com. Basically, it's a pe- taking a piece of the outdoors, bringing it indoors for your animal, and it's really changed the lives of uh, 
people all across the world. You mentioned all the countries that you're in because it, it makes that a lot easier, makes uh, it, animals more accessible for people who may not be able to do that, especially in a high rise situation. I want to talk a little bit about the background because you really didn't have, as I understand it, business background. You were a basketball coach. You were involved in uh, in personal training. But all those attributes that you learned really prepared you to to start your own business. Yeah, look, um, you know, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, and really my background originally was in um, personal health and, and physical education. Um, and the skills, really, that I, I acquired uh, going through that qualification and, and, and college and, and uh, you know, and schooling and whatnot um, to real-world experiences has definitely shaped my leadership. Um, and the way in which I interact with people today. So, you know, I know a couple of people that I'm very close with that are somewhat ashamed or embarrassed that they're only doing this or only doing that, uh, when in reality, they're, le- they're learning at the stage of where they're at today. They're learning vital skills, which is going to create a platform for which they'll be able to further excel themselves. Well, I and have you... a lot of self... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Belief. No, no, I was just going to say I have a lot of self-belief in what I'm doing, but I want to articulate the only difference between me and, and, and Joe Schmo sitting on the couch is that I decided to get out and make that difference, um, and anyone can do that. Um, there's nothing special about it. It's just kind of backing yourself, believing in yourself, and going and getting it. Um, well, it's interesting where you drew inspiration. I mentioned a basketball coach, a basketball fan, a fan of Michael Jordan, uh, Jordan is such a, a higher level than, than most people are proficiency-wise, at least whatever they're doing. But you said, I learned skills from him and how you really have to master those. And I also learned about hard work. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to, uh, Rick. It's, you know, Michael Jordan is a phenom. The difference between him and Scotty Pippen may really only be a couple of percent, but it was the first guy in and the last one out. His work ethic was you know, whether he was the best player in the world or there's better players out there today, the point of the conversation is that he was committed to what he was doing um, and he was a winner because he would go to all extents. Um, he would be putting those extra shot up, shots up in the gym after everyone had left. He would be the first guy in there before everyone got there. Um, and really, uh, you know, you're watching any professional sports. The difference between a win and a loss can really be a foul shot at the end of the quarter, uh, end of the game, or a three-point shot to win the game, you know, on the buzzer. Uh, the point is, that's the difference between good and great. And I want my company and my products to be great, and I want the people in my organization to be great. Um, and they're not uh, crazy, unbelievable athletes, but they're people that are committed. Um, and that's the difference between, uh, in my world, that's the difference between being good and Talking with Toby Scovron, he's the CEO and founder of The Pet Lou, actually invented the product along with his wife. His website is thepetlou.com. Lou is L-O-O dot com, thepetlou.com. You can get all the information and see the product. Let's take a few minutes and talk exactly about uh, the benefits of the product, why it's different than the competition, and how it can change the life for the people that are pet owners. Yeah, look, I, I, I really don't look at the pet loo as a product. I really look at it as a solution. Um, and what I mean by that is my goal fundamentally is to break down the barriers to pet ownership. So there's a lot of people that live on boats, in high rises, in the snow, um, uh, in uh, condos, in, in nursing homes that really would love the opportunity to own a pet, except circumstantially, they see it as, a, as problematic to their lifestyle or problematic to the way in which they live uh, or dwelling in which they live in. Um, and so I believe that what we have created is a, a solution that breaks down those barriers. So you can be a pet owner living in New York City uh, in a high-rise because we can bring that backyard indoors or we can put the backyard on the balcony if it's not snowing outside. Likewise could be said for you know, cold climates, hot climates, so on and so forth. So um, the product was really inspired from that. Um, Originally, it was designed and developed specifically to my situation. However, when I pushed the product into market, I found that, you know, thousands of people from thousands of different walks of life and uh, living environments uh, love the product for the solution aspect of it. Um, Originally, it was designed, well, originally, it's still the same design today, 
Um, but it, what happens is mechanically, the dog does its business on the grass like it would in a normal backyard. So no different uh, as far as the under the foot uh, under sur- under the foot surface is uh, associated. Um, what happens after that is where all of the intellectual property and the patents and trademarks and the design ingenuity and all of that takes place. But as complex as that sounds, is very simple. What happens is the dog does its business on the grass, which is a familiar territory for them. It then drains through onto a corrugated tray. And the only way I can describe it, and I really wouldn't encourage you to eat off of it, but it is uh, designed very similarly to uh, sort of like a George Foreman grill. So it creates <laughs> that channeling and dripping into a collection reservoir. Okay. Um, and, that, and then that reservoir uh, has a little product in there called a pea pod, um, and we're about to launch the pea pod pad, um, which soaks up all of the odors and bacteria and traps and encapsulates airborne odors. And all you have to do as a consumer is empty that catchment jug every three or four days. Um, that's pretty much it. It comes in three different sizes. It works amazingly well for the pet because of the surface they recognize. And it works even better for the pet owner because uh, maintenance-wise, is very low. Uh, it doesn't smell, there's nothing to rot, there's no grass you need to water, um, and it's, it really is fantastic. And the success of the product is in its simplicity and the solution that it provides everyday pet owners for, with. You get all the information at thepetloo.com. Talk before about determination, and you were determined to make this work. I, there's a story that you tell, and I can just picture this. You're actually lugging the prototype around New York City, actually run <laughs> into a gentleman who ends up being a, a great mentor in this, but you're at Murray's Bagels, and you're pushing, yeah. you know, the pet loo. I mean, that's that really is persistence to be able to, <laughs> to carry this around the streets of Manhattan and actually be, be able to pitch the product at that time. Well, you know, uh, the success of any business, is sticking to what you do best and outsource the rest. Now, I don't say that loosely. I'm not saying do what you do best and go and outsource everything, but understand that your strengths are, understand where your strengths are and where you're weaker. Work on those skills to become better. However, if there's someone better in the position, go ahead and do it. Um, The New York City uh, experience was, I built a phenomenal business in Australia, and I was really just... Re, re, rereading or road mapping those uh, or how I got done and, and literally in Australia I lugged the loo from one store to another to another to you know now supplying 1200 stores across the country and when I came to the United States I was prepared because it was a successful uh, experience down in Australia I was prepared to replicate that here only you find out that you know you can't fit a uh, square peg in a round hole and the New York, or not New York specifically, but the United States market is very different and very vast and a lot deeper than the Australian market. And so you can't replicate if that's, you know, square peg round hole scenario, what we did in Australia here in the United States. So somewhat defeated, more jet lagged and exhausted from hauling myself uh, 15 hours to Los Angeles and then six hours across to the East Coast, all in, all in you know, the same day. Um, landing at, at 5 a.m., waiting for the stores to open at 9, and then hitting the road uh, store by store with a, with a bag trolley. Um, I was very exhausted and ran in, uh, and my uh, business partner at the time, um, well, general manager for my U.S. operation, said, you know what, just take, your, take five minutes, let's go into this bagel or this cafe where they serve these bagels, and we'll get you some food. So I sit down, almost, almost passed out, I was so exhausted, <laughs> and, but I was hungry. Not, not for food, but I was hungry to just keep going because I, I wanted to cover a certain amount of stores in Manhattan at that time. And this gentleman by the name of Mark Stern, uh, if anyone in the pet industry um, is listening today, although I know Mark Stern was the absolute king of the industry in his time. He uh, founded 81 and United Pet Group, um, and uh, he was the American Pet Products Association president, um, a phenomenal guy. Of all people that are in New York City, this guy, Mark Stern, walks in, looks at me, looks at my pet loo, and goes, what's going on here? And uh, I was a little dismissive of him at the time because I was really tired and I just wanted five minutes to not pitch my product. So he basically Um, initiated the conversation. Oh, 100%. He he probed enough to make me roll out my pitch to him. 
And I started pitching to him, and he goes, you know what, kid? I think you've got something here, and I'd love to help you. And I was like, okay, sort of thank you. I appreciate that. was really kind of you, uh, Mr. What's your name? Uh, Mark's my name. Okay, uh, yeah, M- Mark Stern. He gives me his business card. I'm like, oh, do you own a pet? He goes, no, but I used to own a pet company. Well, his pet company was like the, you know, a multi-billion dollar organization that spanned every country of the world. And you talk about every pet product under the sun uh, he manufactured. Um, and I'm sitting in front of him. He's, he's, he, at the time, he had retired and, and sold off the business and, and uh, floated it and went public and, and did all of that amazing stuff. Well, and that's an amazing story. We're just about out of time, but I think that shows once again that old saying, the uh, the harder you work, the luckier you get. I mean, you put your posi- self in that position to be there and to be able to uh, to pitch your product to this guy who was like uh, a leader in the industry. Yeah, and he opened up some doors. He only opened the door and then threw me in, and I've uh, built the rest, um, and you can see it all on the petloo.com today. Um, but, yeah, uh, lucky perhaps. Like right place, right time. Um, but I think, quite honestly, um, like you said, Rick, I put myself in that position, um, and uh, the results speak for themselves. They certainly do. And Toby Scovrind has been our guest on This Week in America. We'll have Toby back in another program. CEO, the founder of The Pet Lou. Uh, the website is thepetlou.com. You can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and log on get the information. You can actually see the product uh uh, we'll have Toby back and talk about customer satisfaction because it's amazing reading some of the stories from people that were not able, especially those disabled or elderly, not able to have a pet, that because of the pet loo are able to handle the responsibilities of, uh, of a pet. And it's literally changed their lives. Toby, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Rick, likewise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day, America. You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Toby, that was great. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. That was a lot of fun. I will get you uh, all the information when it's going to air.